Now let's look at the network configuration of a node on a network. First we have the IP address. IP addresses are made up of four octets. So we have one, two, three, four. Next we have the subnet mask. The subnet mask defines which part of the IP address is the subnet and which part is the specific node on that network. We'll get into what a subnet is later in the routing module, but for now just know that if an IP address you're trying to reach is not part of your subnet, it has to go through the default gateway. And then we have the DNS servers that our computer will use to turn names into IP addresses. Now let's open the command prompt and run the command ipconfig. This command without any arguments will show me my basic network information. So we see we have my IP address, my subnet mask, and my default gateway here. If I run the command ipconfig slash all, it shows me a little bit more information. In fact, I'm going to run that again and pipe it to the more command. So now I can see I have my host name, I still have my IP address, my subnet mask, but it shows me things like my DHCP list, which we'll talk about in a little bit, my default gateway, where I got my IP address from, where, I, where the DHCP, DHCP server is located. So it gets a little bit more information about my IP configuration. If I go down one more page here, we'll also see, we almost missed it there, but it also gives me the DNS server that my computer is configured to point to. Now if you're running Vista or above, so it's Vista, Windows 7, Windows 2008, Windows 2008 R2, you may see some adapters that you're not quite sure where they came from. So here we have the Isotap and the Teredo tunneling adapter. These come from IPv6 connectivity. We're going to talk about IPv6 in a little bit, but by and large we can ignore these for now. So where did my computer get this IP configuration? Well, it got from the DHCP server, which is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. A DHCP server on a large network will be an actual server, like in an enterprise environment. But at home, if you have one of those Linksys routers or Netgear routers or you know, any of those, those home routers, it has a DHCP server built into it, and it hands out addresses. The way this process works is when a machine comes online and it needs IP configuration, it sends out a broadcast message and says, hey, I need an IP address. DHCP, DHCP servers will find the, those messages and will respond with an IP address and, and subnet mask, uh, default gateway DNS servers that this client machine can use. The client machine will receive that information, will configure itself, and will, then will respond to the DHCP server and say, okay, thanks, I'm going to use that address, and it will know not to hand out that address anymore for a specified period of time. One thing you should be aware of is starting with Windows 2000, if a computer is unable to find a DHCP server, it will eventually give itself an address in the 169.254 address range. This is an address range owned by Microsoft, and computers will self-configure themselves to use these computers. By and large, it's never used in the real world, but if you have troubles connecting to a network and you see your computer with this IP address, that lets you know that something's wrong and for some reason you're not able to get an address from a DHCP server.